Hi, welcome back to the garden. Today is Wednesday, July 6th. I'm sure glad you stopped by the garden today. The other day we talked about things you could plant in July. Now we got quite a few of those things already planted. We also talked about what we could do with our squash. When our squash came under attack, we put some redwood chips down, used a little bit of Dawn in water, sprayed the stink bugs, and so far they've come back really well. Now we've taken off quite a few of these yellow zucchini. They're very tasty. We even had a couple volunteers come up, but I don't know if we're 100% out of the woods yet. And out of all the July crops that we talked about, the one thing we haven't planted is squash. I'm coming to you outside of the garden because I made that rule. Anytime you visited the garden, you had to plant something. But I intend to plant some squash, but we're not going to plant them in the garden just yet. As we've talked about, there are several things that can hurt your squash plants. One are the squash bugs and one are the vine borers. Now their life cycle primarily is June and July. So we're going to plant our squash in these cells and by the middle end of July we'll be able to put them out in the garden and if everything that's out there is alive we're going to have a nice squash harvest for the fall. Of course in your area you have to look at when the first frost is. For us here in northeast Oklahoma the first frost is oh somewhere around October 24th and it's July 6th so that gives us remove the five the four no, we got a little over 100 days, so that kind of tells you what I can plant and what I can expect. It's also really good to go to the hardware store about this time of year, because I got $4 seeds for 50 cents. They're in the hardware business, they're not in the planting business. Let's take a look at what we got going here. Now we got some uh, summer squash, it says 50 days to harvest some zucchini that is 45 to 65 days to harvest here's some winter squash that's spaghetti squash and this thing says it's 95 days to harvest so this will be probably our longest one butternut squash that's about 85 days to harvest and then we got some summer crookneck squash and that's pretty fast 53 days to harvest I'm gonna hold them to it 53 days from today but we're also going to start a couple brassicas. I've got a nice purple cabbage. It says 75 days to harvest. So we got time for that. So our butternut. We do like the butternut. You can make bread with this. Anything you make with butternut squash, you can freeze and you can save it. It's a really nice squash. And our spaghetti squash. So these are our two longest. And we really like the spaghetti squash, and it lasts on the counter a long time. I'm only going to plant one seed in each cell. I'm going to plant a bunch of these. Our summer squash grows very fast, so we're going to do one cell each of that. Six of the straight neck, and six of the zucchini. Now, if these all germinate, we're going to have zucchini bread and butternut squash bread which is really good. And then we'll be able to eat spaghetti squash all winter long. So I'm gonna add a little soil over the top. We'll give them a drink here in a second. We got time on the kale because you can go ahead and start harvesting that as it grows. Our cabbage on the other hand will slow down. It won't stop, but it'll slow down once it starts getting cold. So I'm just gonna put one or two in each one of these cells. Now if we like these, that'll leave quite a few seeds for spring. Now you can go ahead and plant directly into the garden at this time, but we're running out of room and we're gonna need to harvest some of that stuff before I have a place to put these. It's cooled off to 100 degrees right now, and I'm thinking about the first frost. The little pre-planting, little succession planting, what's that old saying? If you want to grow, you got to sow. You do a little pre-planning, you can be able to extend your harvest, and that's what it's all about. I've already thought about the straw that I'm going to have to get to make the coal frames. You can do this too. It's not that hard. Now, one of the things we really like about these cells is they got a tray underneath, so they're not going to dry out in this heat. Everything else behind me, we're watering quite a bit. And if you've been wondering what I've, where I've been getting stuff to plant every time I visit the garden, 
that's where it's at. Just make sure this is watered in well. It's got good soil contact. These cells, then go ahead and draw water up from the bottom of these cells. It's a pretty good deal. I'm just going to leave them here in the yard. It gets plenty of sun. And we'll follow these, and when they come up, if we need to, we can put some bug netting on them or take a look at how many days you have left for the first frost. Get some dirt, put a seed in it. You can't grow until you sow. You can do this too. I want to thank you for stopping by the garden and help me get the next round in. And until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.